Welcome, welcome everybody to the introduction to the first stock in the $2,000 to $1 million recovery trade program. Before we get started, please pause this video and read this disclaimer. Let's get started on what I hope to be a life-changing series of webinars, how to start with only $2,000 and end up with a million dollars in just four stock trades. This video is about your first trade, a $2 stock that I think is headed for $24 plus. Okay, I want to remind you why I'm giving you this for free. The full answer to that question is in the first video of this series, and please watch it before you watch this one to completely understand what we're trying to do here. I've been in the investment business since 1968, and the one thing I know for sure is that the individual investor gets screwed over and it seems like it gets worse every year. I just like to see us take a pile of money out of their pockets for a change. Now your first question should be who the heck am I? I'll run through this quickly because I covered it in the first video. I graduated from Harvard about a million years ago. I've been following stocks since 1970, got my CFA charter in 1975. I started writing investment newsletters in 1982 and the most recent name is New World Investor. I've managed mutual funds and hedge funds, including all short sale accounts. And I've written three books on investing, including one last year called Survive the Great Inflation. So what is the first stock in the $2,000 and $1 million recovery trade sequence? It's Arena Pharmaceuticals, symbol ARNA. Arena only has about 160 million shares outstanding, so at $2, it's a 320 million market cap company. Here's why I like Arena. In spite of its very low current valuation, I think it's about to get FDA approval for one of the first effective and truly safe new obesity drugs in years. I think it will be first line therapy for weight loss and in combination with Phentermine will absolutely dominate the market. My target for the stock is $24 and I'll show you my spreadsheet in a bit to justify that. But even at $24, it will still be a mid-cap company and an acquisition target for any number of big pharma companies. So let's talk about Arena. Arena is a biotech company, and like almost all biotech companies, it's been working a long time to get their first drug on the market. Their specialty is G-protein coupled receptors, which is a very broad area. These are a large protein family of transmembrane receptors, which means they go through the cell membrane. They can sense molecules outside the cell and then activate inside signal transduction pathways and therefore cellular responses. G-protein coupled receptors are involved in many diseases and are also the target of approximately 40 percent of all modern medical drugs. I'll talk about Arena's product portfolio at the end, but the key to the stock is their lead drug, Lorcaserin with the trade name Lorkes. It's for obesity in both diabetic and non-diabetic patients that have at least one other problem, which is called a comorbidity. <clears throat> Lorcaserin has com successfully completed three phase three trials involving about 8,000 patients, and the company has two-year data. They originally submitted their new drug application over two years ago, and due to what most of us think was a poorly analyzed response from the FDA, the first advisory committee voted against approval and the FDA issued a complete response letter in October of 2010. It took over a year for the company to respond to all the issues, but they did and filed their amended new drug application at the end of 2011. There will be a second advisory committee on May 10th with um, more members, different members, although some overlap with the first committee. And the final FDA decision is due by Wednesday, June 27th. It probably will come right on that day. Uh, they usually send a fax to the company after the market closes. I expect approval. Now, as you can tell from the stock price, most people do not expect approval. In fact, there's a contingent of short sellers, bloggers, and message board bashers actively working against approval. So that's the big risk, <clears throat> that they do not get approval. Of 
course, that's also the big reward if they do get approval, as I expect. Arena should easily return five times on your investment, which is my requirement to be the first stock in the $2,000 to $1 million recovery trade sequence. Okay, let's talk about the market for an obesity drug. About two-thirds of us are overweight, including one-third that are clinically obese, as measured by body mass index, usually over 30. Obesity is finally being recognized for the health care disaster that it is. The direct and indirect costs are estimated at $268 billion a year, including excess medical costs, disability, and mortality. And the FDA has finally been pushed past their lifestyle bias by research showing that metabolism slows dramatically in people who are dieting, so then they can't lose weight, and a realization that an awful lot of obese people are also disabled and can't exercise. In many cases, that's exactly why they're obese in the first place. Congress has asked the FDA to report by March 31st on what they're going to do about obesity. And the current alternatives, phentermine, which is basically crystal meth, or bariatric surgery, which has a death rate, are just not that great. Doctors really need more alternatives. Let's look a little further at the market. I've already talked about the U.S., but obesity is a worldwide problem. Arena filed for approval in Europe on March 2nd. The percentage obese is over 25% in Portugal, Italy, Spain, and nearly there in Germany. It gives a whole new meaning to the acronym PIGS. Norway and the UK are about even with Germany and Poland, the Czech Republic, and others are worse. What a lot of people don't understand is that all the weight loss drugs approved to date show around 5% weight loss in a year, and that is a good number. A 5% weight loss makes a difference to a lot of health issues, including progression to diabetes, and a 10% weight loss makes a big difference. About a third of the Lorcaserin patients who completed the trial lost more than 10% of their body weight. So this is a very effective drug. You don't want people losing 30% of their body weight in 12 months. So here are the trial results. The FDA has two alternative standards for obesity drugs, and a drug only has to meet one of them, and Lorcaserin met the standard. Here are the effects on some of the comorbidities. In every case, they favored Lorcaserin over the placebo. And look down there at the bottom at those great numbers for the type 2 diabetics on a number of important issues compared to the non-diabetics. Both of them were improved, but it really helped the diabetics. Cardiovascular risk factors were much improved at all body mass index levels. Lorcaserin lowered triglycerides and raised the HDL or good cholesterol. And here's a really important one improved glycemic control at all levels of obesity. There's a direct relationship between glycemic control and progression to type 2 diabetes. HbA1c is the ratio of glycated hemoglobin to total hemoglobin. So if someone has persistent raised plasma glucose levels, it will cause the proportion of those molecules to go up. At the end of the first year, both HbA1c and fasting glucose showed significant improvement. Now, in a non-diabetic, HbA1c levels range from 4% to 6%. Patients with diabetes who manage to keep their HbA1c level below 7% are considered to have good glycemic control. Look at the dramatic improvement with lorcaserin. About 25% of the placebo patients had HbA1c below 7% compared to nearly 50% of the lorcaserin patients. That's huge. And on the right, you can see a dramatic change in the use of diabetes medications. Also, changes in HbA1c, blood pressure, and progression to type 2 diabetes are validated surrogate endpoints for progression to cardiovascular disease and lorcaserin had a beneficial effect on all three. Here are the adverse events. <clears throat> the main one compared to placebo was a headache. Reportedly, headaches lessened or went away after a while on the drug. Incidentally, QD is once a day and BID is twice a day dosing, which is uh, what the company has applied for approval. Now, the FDA made Arena do a cardiac impact study on 
every patient as part of their phase three trials. The fen-phen diet drug combination of fenfluramine and fentramine caused heart valve damage due to the fenfluramine component. And the FDA wanted to be sure that norcasserin hits the appetite receptor without hitting the heart valve receptor. As you can see, they were successful and there were no issues about valvulopathy in the complete response letter. Now the FDA made ARENA do a cardiac impact study on every patient as part of their phase three trials. The fen-phen diet drug combination of fenfluramine and fentramine caused heart valve damage due to the fenfluramine component. And the FDA wanted to be sure that norcasserin hits the appetite receptor without hitting the heart valve receptor. As you can see, they were successful and there were no issues about valvulopathy in the complete response letter. So what will be the issues at the May 10th advisory committee meeting? Most of the committee will be the same folks who just voted 20 to 2 to approve Conexa, which is a more dangerous drug with more side effects. Well, the first issue will be rat cancer, which was invented by the FDA. Uh, they combine benign and malignant tumors, which is bad science at the least. I think they did it because they didn't trust ARENA's classification of the tumors. ARENA responded with a reclassification by five independent pathologists who were approved by the FDA, and the reclassified tumors showed even less cancer, so I think the rat cancer issue is behind us. Here's what else the company had to do. They had to submit the Bloom DM Phase 3 trial results in diabetics, which was a relatively small trial. It wasn't, uh, the data wasn't available when they applied for the, uh, the first time around. But they've done that. The numbers were very good, especially the comorbidity improvements. They had to re-adjudicate the rat cancer data that I referred to on the last slide. And they had to investigate the tumor mechanism. Even though they showed there was no cancer signal, the FDA made them investigate the tumor mechanism. They also had to look at brain tumors in male rats. Even uh, again, there was no threat to humans. Um, they had to do more work on receptor activity, even though they had shown no problems with valvulopathy. And they had to do more work on abuse potential in order to show that this should not be a Schedule II drug, which has some prescription restrictions. I really don't know how this issue will turn out, because the FDA may take the position it's still a Schedule II drug, or they may relax their preliminary position to classify it as Schedule III, or even Schedule IV. Schedule IV is reserved for drugs with low potential for abuse, uh, and they lead to limited physical or psychological dependence. While that certainly describes lorcasserin, the FDA may start it at Schedule III or, or IV uh, or II. This is just not a deal breaker either way. Now, uh, the fake issues. These are the issues you'll read about that are promulgated by the short sellers as they whisper to their favorite journalists who then reprint what they're told to get high clicks and a high rank in Google. They also pay bashers to post negative comments on message boards. So lung metastases, that's a good scary one. None of the original cancers were statistically significant, so the fact that various cancers, these are in rats, the fact that various cancers happen to metastasize to the lungs is not relevant. Uh, when you see this one, you know you're reading a mouthpiece for the short sellers. Marginal efficacy is another good one. The FDA, as I said, has two standards because weight loss drugs typically work very well for some patients and not at all for others. A single standard for clinical trials might mean no obesity drug ever gets approved, even if it's very effective for a subset of patients. So any new drug has to meet one of the two standards and Lorcaserin met one of the standards. Now, lorcaserin does not have to be titrated, so doctors can tell in about a month if it's going to work for someone. Those who does work for do very well. For example, the recommended dose of Conexa showed about 37% of patients lost over 10% of their body weight in the course of the first year, while about 34% of the lorcaserin patients lost over 10% of their body weight. And remember, that was without any fentramine. In practice, I have no doubt that some patients will get better results with Conexa and others with Lorcasserin. 
and doctors and patients need both alternatives. Another one you might see is uh, valvulopathy signals in Bloom DM. That's more short cell or BS. The FDA is looking at the combined data. They're not looking at the smallest phase three trial. Let's talk about the competitors. There were uh, three development stage biotech companies developing obesity drugs, Arena, Vibis, and Orexigen. Vibis and Orexigen develop drugs that are combinations of two generics. In Vivas's case, one of the generics was phentermine. Lorcasserin is a new chemical entity and did its trials without phentermine at the request of the FDA. Now, on the first go-round, all three companies received complete response letters. Vivas refiled for approval of Conexa, and I expect it will be approved, at least in the mid-dose version, by April 17th. Uh, the only possible problems I see are an FDA advisory committee meeting scheduled for March 28th and 29th to decide what to do about requiring a cardiovascular impact trial for obesity drugs. They could decide to require a trial in advance for new drugs, but I think they would let Vivas proceed with a post-approval cardiovascular study anyway. The remaining problem uh, with Vivas is oral clefts, which is caused by one of the generic drugs in Conexa, but I expect the FDA to approve the drug anyway. Orexigen already was required to complete a large cardiovascular study before approval as part of their uh, complete response letter. So that cardiovascular safety meeting could say anything, but remember that Lorcasserin was required to do their study as part of all three phase three trials. As I said, Vivas could be required to do a pre-approval trial but I just think the FDA would let them proceed with their planned post-approval trial, mostly because the cardiac impact of Conexus seems pretty small. Now, for 50 years, obesity doctors have been using phentermine. It's an amphetamine, and darn right you lose weight on it. But it can only be given short-term. It accumulates in the body, and after 12 weeks, the obesity doctors take the patients off it to detox, and then, unfortunately, the patients often regain weight during this period. So doctors needed a new appetite suppressant to give with phentermine or, or to completely get rid of phentermine. So Vivas put two generic drugs together, topiramate and phentermine. Topiramate is an anti-epilepsy drug, which is also used for migraine headaches and to treat binge eating. Uh, and we already know about phentermine. So in this combination, Topiramate is the appetite suppressant, and phentermine is the weight burner. Orexigen also put two generic drugs together, naltrexone and bupropion. Naltrexone blocks opioid receptors. It's used to treat alcohol dependence. Bupropion is an antidepressant and a psychostimulant. Uh, it's a chemical derivative of substituted amphetamine. So here, naltrexone is the appetite suppressant, and bupropion is the weight burner. Arena developed Lorkes, which is Lorcasserin plus nothing. And so they did their clinical trials with an appetite suppressant and no weight burner. They achieved their clinical results and met the FDA guidance without anything to stimulate the patient's metabolism to burn weight. So why would Arena spend all this money on clinical trials without including phentermine? because the FDA told them to. Lorcasserin is a new chemical entity and the FDA wanted a trial of it alone. So it was risky, but Lorcasserin did cause enough weight loss to meet the FDA standard. I don't think there's any doubt that Lorcasserin is the safest and most effective appetite suppressant. That, that is, I don't believe topiramate or naltrexone by themselves can come anywhere near Lorcasserin's numbers. So what is likely to happen next? Well, since the FDA asked for a trial of Lorcasserin only, I don't think they'll penalize it by comparing it to a generic combination that includes phentermine. Remember, if the FDA doesn't approve this new chemical entity, then there can't be future trials of combinations with Lorcasserin that might find much more effectiveness, such as combined with phentermine. Once the drug is approved, doctors can and, and often do prescribe it with other drugs. And since they're already so familiar with phentermine, 
I think docs will try that combination right away uh, with excellent results. Incidentally, uh, Arena already has a patent on a pill that would be Lorcasrin plus fentanyl. One of the big questions about Connex is how quickly doctors will get comfortable with continuous fentamine. Another is how they'll feel about the well-known side effects of topiramate. When it was marketed as Topamax, it was nicknamed Ropadope. It also lowers the effectiveness of birth control pills, yet increases oral clefts by 20 times compared to the general population. About 80% of the people in, in obesity clinics are women of childbearing age. But I still think Connex will be approved, at least at the mid-dose. Contrave, of course, had their cardiovascular issues, and um, the FDA has required another trial. So my guess is that doctors will be careful about changing years of prescribing behavior with fentamine. Uh, so they're likely to start with Lorcasrin. It doesn't have to be titrated, as Conexa does. And in about a month, they can spot the high responders. Then they can move a low responding patient to a Lorcasrin plus fentamine and see how that goes. And if that doesn't work for someone, they'll try Conexa. Okay, let's talk about marketing. Arena has a qualified manufacturing facility in Switzerland where I believe the capacity is about 5 billion pills a year, which is enough to treat almost 7 million patients a year. They have uh, signed a deal with Isai, the large Japanese drug company, to distribute Lorcas in the U.S. I don't believe Arena will incur U.S. taxes on the sale of pills to Isai if they leave the money overseas. And Arena has retained all the non-U.S. rights. As I said, they did file for approval in Europe on March 2, and they're going to move fairly quickly in Europe. They are talking to potential partners there, and an announcement could come at any time. They're also talking to potential partners in other parts of the world. I expect they'll sign a deal with Isai for Japan, uh, and any announcements would bump up the stock. So here's my revenue model for Arena. Let's take some time to go through it. Uh, on line one, I start with the U.S. population, and that's projected to grow a little less than 1% uh, a year. Line two is the 67% uh, of the population between the ages of 15 and 64, and that's just a simple multiplication. Line three, I obesity estimates for this age group vary from 26.4% to 34.5%, depending on how obesity is defined. Um, the percentage of overweight people is at least as large as that, but Lorcasrin's label probably will be only for the clinically obese. Of course, it will be used extensively off-label, but let's ignore that. I use 30% as an estimate of the obese people, which I think is conservative. So that's that line. Now, last year, about 4.4 million people sought treatment for obesity. That's about 7% of the calculated population. I made what I think is a cautious assumption that this will grow by 1% a year. So by 2016, 11% of the obese will be seeking uh, help uh, as word spreads about Lorcasrin and Conexa. So that gives us the number of people seeking treatment. Within 30 days of starting treatment, doctors know who the high responders are. And in the clinical trials, that cohort was about 35% of those uh, taking the drug. Now in actual practice, I expect Lorcasrin to continue to be used for a much higher percentage of patients, at least for a while. But let's not count that the first month of sales or any continuation except for the high responders. So that gives us the uh, number of patients that are going to be treated and helped by Lorcasrin. These are the revenue generating patients. Next, I've assumed the drug is priced at only $1 a pill uh, with two pills a day. I recall one early conference call where the company said that was the low end of the reasonable range. After approval, I can easily change this spreadsheet to reflect the real pricing. But to be conservative again, let's just assume 
two dollars a day per patient and that gives us the annual revenues to decide now in in 2012 uh, the drug will not be approved till mid-year and it'll take another three months to get to market so I've actually divided the annual revenue calculation by four to get to the 281 million in sales by SI and just to be conservative I also divided the uh, 2013 sales by two to account for rollout and stocking issues and that reduced ESI's revenues from Lorca into 648 million that's probably overly conservative now under the terms of the deal with ESI Arena will manufacture the product in Switzerland and sell it to ESI for a purchase price which starts at 31.5% of ESI's annual net product sales and then the purchase price will increase on a tiered basis to as high as 36.5% on the portion of annual net product sales exceeding 750 million. I assume there's no increase until the 750 million level is hit which is also conservative. So that gives us the revenues to ARENA from ASI, assuming Lorca Seren does not hit full stride until 2014. Uh, and as I explained above, full stride is itself a conservative number. I then assume the same path for revenue growth in Europe with a one year lag. And that implies European introduction in the fourth quarter of 2013. That's also pretty conservative. Uh, on line 10, in addition to their share of sales of Lorca Casserin, Arena gets up to an additional 60 million in milestone payments upon regulatory approval and delivery of the product supply for launch. So I show that in 2012. And then there's another 70 million in regulatory and development milestone payments that I split equally between 2013 and 2014. Finally, on line 11, there's 1.16 billion in one-time purchase price adjustments based on annual sales of Lorcasterin. I don't have any idea what that schedule of payments is. I assumed it adds 10 percentage points to Arena's share of the revenues starting in 2014, although it would take many years to add up to 1.16 billion. So the actual schedule is probably faster, but I don't know what it is. Now, the bottom line here on line 12, Arena does roughly 100 50 million in revenues this year, a little over 325 million next year, almost 850 million in 2014 as Europe kicks in, and then over 1.3 billion two years later. So if those numbers seem outrageous to you, um, fine, do your own spreadsheet. You can make even more conservative assumptions if you want, but I could make an equally strong case for higher pricing or a higher percentage of the obese seeking treatment or faster purchase price adjustments. So what's it worth? Well, any drug that has blockbuster status is worth six times revenues, usually more. So using six times revenues, Arena has a value of nearly $900 million this year, followed by $2 billion in 2013, $5 billion in 2014, and so forth. Uh, on line 14, the company has uh, 160 million shares outstanding. So the calculated price per share here is $6 this year, then 12, 32, 45, and 52. Now, why do I say that the stock's going to $24 plus? It's because when Wall Street calculates uh, uh, prices on a stock, they run this kind of model. They discount expected future prices. And once Lorcasserin is approved, models like this will be everywhere. Some will use more aggressive assumptions. Uh, some will use less aggressive assumptions. Some of our hedge fund short friends probably will show their blogger buddies a model in which Lorcasserin only sells three pills and they'll print that as news. Al although Wall Street usually discounts future earnings at 10% a year, maybe 15%, I've used a more stringent 20% discount rate. So what you see here is that the $52 price in 2016 is worth $25 today. Okay. Cash. At December 31st, the company had 57.6 million in cash. 
they picked up 27.9 million more in a January private financing, and they just closed 24.7 million in an early March private placement. They're using around 23 million a quarter, so they can get to that June 27th date easily. But realistically, they got to get approval, or this stock could go to zero. That's why you don't want to go overboard with this stock. Arena does have another a pipeline of other products, but if Lorcasserin's turned down or delayed, the debt holders are going to get this company on the pipeline, not us. Arena has about 116 million in in debt. Short interest uh, in Arena has increased from 20.4 million at the end of the year to 25.3 million at the end of February, which is 21.4 percent of the float or 2.6 days of the recent average volume. There could be a short squeeze at any time, but I'll tell you, those folks will fight tooth and nail. So Arena is a uh, core holding in New World Investor and a trading buy under $5 for the European Rest of World Partnership announcements uh, with a $24 target after the FDA approves Lorkes in 2012. Please recognize that if they don't approve it, you're likely to suffer a total loss of principal and please don't invest more than two thousand dollars if you really are following the two thousand dollar to one million dollar recovery trade sequence so if you have any questions you can sign up for free updates and notifications of new videos at newworldinvestor.com slash ARNA as I said in the first video my job in this partnership is to hunt far and wide for possible ideas, research them with extensive due diligence, present them to you and follow them from buy recommendation to the sell and hopefully cash in recommendation. <coughs> it is not to follow me blindly, but think about if what I'm saying makes sense, take an appropriate position. I don't know enough about you to recommend a position and the SEC won't let me make personalized recommendations anyway. For most people, the $2,000 initial buy should be fine. I can answer general questions about the company, and you can email me at newworldinvestor at gmail.com. Size that Arena Pharmaceuticals had nothing to do with this research report in any way. They didn't even know I was writing it or creating it. It is my work product. Nice disclaimer again in case you missed it. Our job together is to stick to our guns unless the fundamentals change and take as much money as we can away from the bad guys. If you want to bail on this idea right here and forget it, I will not be insulted. But if it's appropriate for you, I hope you'll join me on the $2,000 or $1 million journey. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time and attention. And let's go make some money.